how to explain what happened today in the mortgage-backed security market, but I'm gonna do my best because it's important as a consumer to get an idea of what's happening so that you can make an informed decision about buying in 2023 and in 2024. We're gonna be breaking down at least my, I don't even wanna call it a forecast because I'm too nervous because things are so volatile, but my opinion on what's happening with the market and what it takes to be successful in home buying in 2023 and probably 2024. If you are new to the channel, hi, my name is Lizzie Hofer. I'm a loan officer in Phoenix, Arizona. I've worked in mortgages now for 21 years. So I have seen the before the boom, the boom, the great recession. I saw the recovery, I saw COVID and whatever we're gonna call this, right? So I've seen a lot of different markets. This one is by far the most unique, but I hope this channel brings you a lot of value. And if it does, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and then share this channel and this video with other people that are also in your same situation. What happened today is that they released the numbers for quarter one growth for the, com for the country, right? So GDP numbers. And the original expectation for growth was somewhere around like 1.3 or 1.4%. And the numbers ended up being revised and they ended up coming back at 2%. Now, you don't need to know what that means. You just need to know that it came in higher than expectation. So our economy is still growing at a faster pace than they expected. Now, the reason this is a problem is because inflation, which is the rising cost of goods and services, is beyond what they feel the re like the average consumer can pay. And so the Fed fund rate keeps getting raised to increase prices enough to slow people's buying which will then in essence eventually bring the cost down, right? So you have to make things so unaffordable that it drops demand and so that it drops prices. We have been watching inflation now for over a year and we have seen that it's declining, but it isn't declining at a pace that you would expect. And so we've had a couple of like really strong indications like in the last month. So we had, you know, an increase in jobless claims. We had slowing growth in new job creations. We had low inflation reports. The expectation was that GDP was gonna come right in line with this 1.4 number. Last year at this time, we're talking about like 2.6. So we're still dropping, but because it wasn't dropping low enough, people got scared. And there was a Fed funds meeting last week where they talked about potential rate hikes, which means that they're gonna increase Fed the Fed funds rate again which again is gonna have a trickle down to making things even more expensive for consumers in a variety of different areas. Mortgage interest rates are nuts. That was the first thing, but then, but then believe it or not, there was more. So today we also got the initial jobless claims and this is like where everything like really got crazy. So we started seeing increases in jobless claims and for like the last like three weeks. And so they basically assumed that this week was gonna be another week where we saw an increase in jobless claims, but no, they actually came in less than expected, right? So not only do we have stronger economic growth, but now we have less unemployment and it, we're just going in the wrong direction. The bond market, took a bath today. And I'm not gonna give you exact interest rates because this video doesn't come in real time, uh, but there are a lot of places where you can research that online. One of my favorite resources is Mortgage News Daily. It has like, I think one of the best comparisons for for mortgage brokers and lenders throughout the country, and it isn't trying to sell you anything. So I like that one as a resource if you wanna look at that. So what does this information mean to you, the consumer? I think it means that you have to lock in when your budget says it's ready, and this is not the time when you should time the market. In the past, I would look at these economic reports and I'd be like, okay, jobless claims are coming out on Thursday, CPI reports Tuesday, you know, it's fair to say that this data should move the market this way. Consumer, I think that rates might be better on this day. Would you like to float it or would you like to lock it, right? So we'd give you that advice. In this market, you can't count on leading indicators to match the results that we're looking for. In fact, I have been caught off guard several times, not to the extent that I was this time. It's just these, these reports are just not as solid as they once were. As an advisor, I'm gonna tell you, okay, lock in when your budget says it's ready. Most lenders won't lock you in unless you have a purchase contract or you're under contract and have an identified property. Some have lock and shop programs. If your lender doesn't, don't despair. The market is really up and down, but over the last year or so, 
interest rates have been in the mid to high sixes, low sevens. So, I mean, it's gonna be within that range, my, my belief is. Now, that is not a for sure, but that is my professional opinion. The other thing that you should do as a consumer is if you're going to be locking in, you need to ask what the float down policy is for the company because the market is so volatile. Let's say the market starts dropping and you know we don't know what will make that happen, but there could be some sort of economic move of some kind. I don't wanna scare you with this information because I think this is just very short term. And by short term guys, this could be a month, this could be six months, but I think our big picture is that interest rates will go down. And the reason that I know that is because they are being artificially manipulated at this moment by our federal government in terms of that Fed funds rate. And once the, you know, the country is safely in a recession and we have unemployment that's rising and we have very slow economic activity, they will drop mortgage interest rates through the purchase of mortgage-backed securities to stimulate spending. And they've done this historically, great recession, through the recovery and in COVID. So we know that that is gonna be the lever and it's because real estate and real estate related verticals, so like Home Depot, landscapers, insurance companies, mortgage banks, you know, everything that's impacted by real estate makes up 30% of the overall US economy. I believe, and I, I feel very, very confident that mortgage interest rates will drop in the future. Now, I cannot tell you when that will be, but I can tell you things that will help you be a successful homeowner until that period. All right, so what are the things that are gonna make you a successful homeowner in this environment? Well, one, I want you to know that it's more than just your interest rate and it's definitely more than just your mortgage payment. It's about the way your loan is structured, first and foremost, and there's a variety of ways to structure your loan so that you get the lowest payment, but also so that you are constructing your overall finances for a better lifestyle budget. A couple things that you have to look at is one, what are you spending in general? I, I read a headline recently that talked about, you know, the crazy increases with consumer debt and how more and more people are actually getting into debt these days and how credit card payments are just over the top. And so what I know is happening there is people are trying to subsidize the lives that they created in 2020 and 2021. And this is the time guys, when we have to really look at all of our spending and cut anything that is not meaningful to your life. So the subscriptions, the extra spending on eating out. I mean, guys, eating out, when I look at people's bank statements, and I'm not judging, I'm just saying, this is a, an area where you guys can really save money. I mean, it's probably one of the highest spending items outside of the mortgage and student loans. Okay, so really target areas that you could save money on. This is also a time to shop things like your insurance, your cell phone bills, right? We really wanna cut down where we can. Anytime I look at somebody's budget, there's at least two to three hundred dollars a month that I can help them save in ancillary expenses that don't really cut into like their lifestyle. Okay. So number one, we got to revisit that budget. Two, we have to revisit how we structure deals. So a lot of people like to put down really large down payments. They think that the more you put down, the better for your loan. And in most cases, that's the, the truth if you're only factoring monthly payment. But recently I had a client that had, you know, more than a 20% down payment and they had a lot of debt. And I actually recommended to them that they pay off their debt and put a 10% down payment because their overall expenses would go down by $700 which would afford them a better house, but their overall lifestyle, including the mortgage would go down. And so that's what we have to really look at. It's not just the mortgage. It's like, how do I structure my overall finances? I have a budget plan called Smart Sense. And I, my belief is that if you can live off of 70% of your net take home income, you can have 30% of that go towards housing. Now, if you have no consumer debt and you're really just, you know, it's just the house payment and just your lifestyle, right? You could maybe stretch that to 50. You want a budget that allows you to pay down debt and allows you to save. And if you do not have the ability to do either of those things, you have to reconsider just in general, your lifestyle budget, or if there's ways to increase your income. Now for a home loan, secondary jobs, can only be counted if you've had a history of doing them concurrently with your main job. So they, most lenders will wanna see two years of consecutive jobs, but there are things that you can do in the short run, like DoorDash, or there's lots of different online programs that you can have that you can do to increase your cash flow to have larger down payments or to pay down consumer debt like credit cards. And this is the time period where I would definitely do that because 
when we are in a recession, you will find that those opportunities are less and less. And so now is a time where we really wanna be trying to go for our biggest money-making opportunities. If you are looking for a place to start, that budget guide is actually on my website and you can download it for free. You just have to put in your email address. And I'd love to really honestly host a live and go through people's actual budget. So if you feel comfortable and willing to do this, you can email me your budget and we'll do it either in a live video or we'll just break it down in another video. But this is the time guys to really revisit those budgets increase your down payment savings and look at buying a home like look at everything right look at the down payment the way you're structuring it is there a way to buy out mortgage insurance how do we get a 2-1 buy down what are my strategies to save money now and in five years and so i hope that this gives you just a starting point for what to do things to ask in a high rate environment. Now, I'm sorry I couldn't give you a better prediction for what's gonna happen with rates, but I will tell you that even though interest rates are high, I still believe in real estate as a whole. I think it's pretty insulated as far as investments go because there isn't a whole lot of incentive for homeowners right now when 40 over 40% 40 of them own their homes free and clear and 85% of homeowners have a mortgage less than 4% for them to sell their properties. I don't see an environment where there is going to be like a massive wave of foreclosures and I just don't really see inventory increasing to a level that will like be lower than the demand for housing. So I think that the whole housing values are going to be pretty stable and it's an investment that is for saving in terms of the principal that you pay down and also will grow in time. And so for me, I still really, really believe in home ownership. And there are some advantages of buying in a high rate market, like, you know, closing cost concessions and repairs and just overall price negotiations. So I know that this isn't the news that we wanted. It's definitely not the news that I want, but I still think that there's a ton of opportunity here. And I'd love to help you guys really be able to be successful homeowners. Now, if you have any questions, guys, like I said, please don't forget to comment below and don't forget to like this video. Appreciate you guys. Until next time.